Tony Margiotti here, and in this video, I'm gonna share with you a delicious pasta recipe, authentic, that comes from the Amalfi Coast. It's called pasta alla nerano. It's a delicious dish, I absolutely love it, and I'm also gonna share with you a very delicious wine pairing that goes along with this dish. So if you haven't yet subscribed to Gladiator Wine TV, make sure you click on the red button, the red subscribe button below so you don't miss out on anything. So here on my prep board are basically all the ingredients that you're gonna need for this dish. The one thing that I didn't put on the prep board is the basil. I forgot to put that on there. If you have fresh basil, that's our first choice. Otherwise, just use dry basil. Now, we've got zucchini. We've got cacciocavallo cheese. You could also substitute provolone for the cacciocavallo if you can't find it. You just want to make sure that the provolone is semi-aged so that when it melts, it turns into something creamy and not something chunky, okay? And then, of course, olive oil and garlic. So most of your prep time will be taken up from the zucchini. You have to slice the zucchini into little thin coins. Once you've done that, you throw your zucchini into a pan, as you can see in this picture, with some olive oil on medium heat. And you're gonna keep cooking and flipping the zucchini until it starts to look like this in the next picture. And that is sort of a golden brown color. And you also want the zucchini to be very soft, very, very soft. Once it's soft and golden brown, you're going to pull out the zucchini and you're going to put it in a little bowl with a paper towel like you could see in this picture. And the paper towel will absorb the excess olive oil that we don't need anymore. And at this point, we're going to add in the basil. So if you have fresh basil, you're actually going to throw several basil leaves right on top and mix it in with the zucchini. If you don't have that and you have dry basil, use the dry basil. And that's what I had uh, the day I made this. Didn't have any fresh basil that day, unfortunately. But that's okay. Uh, not a big deal. Uh, I'll also mention that while I was cooking the zucchini in the pan, I do add a little bit of salt for taste, just a little bit. All right, so that, that's sort of part one of the recipe. Part two now is while the zucchini is resting in, in its bowl on the side, you're going to take a fresh pan and you're gonna put some fresh olive oil, a little bit into the pan, and a couple cloves of garlic. We wanna create the aromatics uh, that come from the garlic, so we're gonna use very, very low heat, as low as you can go. After about five, six minutes, you'll start to smell the garlic roasting. What I do is I push it off to the side for a little bit, because now I'm going to add in the cacciocavallo cheese. And as you can see in this next picture, with the cacciocavallo, I have grated it into sort of larger pieces um, and it will melt much more easily this way. So I grate it ahead of time. In the next picture here, you can see what the cacciocavallo looks like after it's melted in the olive oil. And at this point, I'm going to take away the garlic out of the, out of the, the pan completely and throw it away. Now, to make this a little bit more creamy, I'm going to start adding uh, water from the pot that we're using for the pasta, the hot boiling water, and I'm going to start dumping a, a couple spoons into the cheese to give it a little more creamier texture. Okay, uh, this is completely up to you, but I I, uh, I recommend a, a couple little little spoonfuls at a time so that you can achieve the creaminess that you're looking for. Now, um, at this point, the cheese has melted. And we're going to add in now our zucchini. And I'm also going to add in a little bit of uh, black pepper uh, to mix with the cheese, the zucchini, the olive oil, etc. And stir it in. We're on low heat at this point. Nice and slow, nice and slow. And then we're going to add a little bit more hot boiling water while the pasta is cooking. And I'll also mention at this point that I always put salt in my pasta water, so I've created salty water, and I'm adding that salt, hot salty water into my zucchini sauce, little by little, to achieve the creaminess that I'm looking for. Once the pasta is al dente, 
you're going to pull the pasta out and throw it right into the pan with the cavallo and zucchini sauce. And you're going to continue to stir it very slowly, very slowly. Maybe put some Italian music on if you're bored. It'll get you uh, in the spirit of things. Um, patience and passion, okay? And then at this point, uh, I'm probably going to be adding some more pasta water. I might use, I would say, a cup to a cup and a half of water total uh, to achieve the, uh, the creaminess that I need. But again, it's better to go slowly and put a little bit at a time to achieve that creaminess. You don't want it too runny that uh, it doesn't stay attached to the pasta. And at the same time, you don't want the pasta to be dry with like super uh, gooey chunks of cheese. You don't want that. So something in the middle. Okay. And then finally, this is, this is what it looks like. The pasta alla merano on the dish. Entirely up to you, but you're welcome to add some Parmigiano Reggiano, grate it on top if you want to add an extra layer of complexity. I decided to pair it with a white wine from the same region, from the Campania region, and that is Fiano di Avellino. And this is coming from the Antico Borgo Micro Winery. It's an artisanal uh, wine producer that makes fantastic Fiano wines and Ayanico wines. This particular Fiano, they produce at just 10,000 bottles a year by hand. All the grapes are hand harvested and hand selected so that only the best grapes are used for winemaking. Now Fiano is one of the most important white grapes in all of Italy. And that's because the Fiano wines uh, have the ability to age, many of which can age 10 years. It's interesting because it, it can outlive uh, many reds. And I'll also add that historically, Fiano has always been an important wine grape, uh, going so far back as the ancient Roman emperors used to drink Fiano. They said in Pliny the Elder's natural history book that the best wines were those coming out of Campania, which is exactly where these wines come from. And I'll finally, I'll, I'll, I'll mention that Avellino province is the crew territory for Fiano wines. For those of you who want to pick up a case of this wine or a mixed case of this wine with some others, all you have to do is click on the link in the description below or you can send an email to the email below to get more information. So that's it. Pasta al Merano paired with Fiano di Avellino. I got to tell you this was one of the most amazing lunches that I've had at home. I was very, very sad when the pasta finished. So until next time, I will see you in the next video.